The Northern Territory Government understands the importance of this event because we know the importance of safe, healthy and affordable housing. We know the advantages of better housing such as improved education, employment, health and social outcomes. A little about myself as a lay person in the room. I have a great memory of growing up in the wild west of Sydney and holding my grandmother's hand, Nana, who was Dad's mother, and walking up Juno Parade in Greenacre to the corner of Wentworth Street, where there was a little demountable building and a public official who was collecting rent. And Nana would pass over a car and one pound, four shillings, and pay the rent for a modest New South Wales Housing Commission home, a three bedroom asbestos clad number, where three generations of the McCarthys lived together and it was wonderful formative years for a future housing minister. Now put your hand up, anybody from Greenacre here? Well, I'll tell you about Greenacre. <laughs> it was a great uh, time in my life and great formative years growing up in Sydney and uh, Territory colleagues had asked me about Greenacre I generally refer them to the Channel 9 News, as Greenacre features quite regularly on the Channel 9 News, but unfortunately for all the wrong reasons. Greenacre uh, was the start of my understanding about housing, and uh, certainly features in a lot of my decision making and a lot of my work with the Department of Local Government Housing and Community Development in the Northern Territory. When it comes to homelessness, the Northern Territory has 12 times the national rate of homelessness. 16.5% of all Territorians under the age of 18 are experiencing homelessness. 6% of all people in the Northern Territory are experiencing homelessness. 13.5 times the national rate of people are sleeping rough. 20% of Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory are experiencing homelessness. 81% of people defined as homeless in the Northern Territory live in severely overcrowded dwellings. Not a good resume for a housing minister in the Northern Territory. But I am pleased to say that we're all part of this in searching for solutions and the theme of this conference sums it up. <coughs> future housing. Currently, 76% of homelessness funding comes from the Northern Territory Government, while only 24% comes from the Australian Government. As long as our current funding regime is maintained, where funding is allocated on population rather than need, then the homelessness rate in the Northern Territory will continue to rise. While I appreciate the Australian Government has future plans to review the funding allocation and I look forward to working with the Australian Government, I'm urgently requesting a more immediate proposition. In terms of public housing in the Northern Territory, in total we administer 10,170 public housing dwellings, 1,850 Government employee houses, 395 affordable houses, 501 industry houses, and 101 community houses. Quite small in comparison to the other jurisdictions represented at this conference. Our urban and regional public housing system functions in much the same way as those public housing systems across the nation. Where public housing in the NT differs, is in its relative size to the rest of the NT housing market. Almost one in five dwellings in the NT is comprised of social housing, most of which is public housing. This is over double the rate of the next highest jurisdiction, being the ACT, and triple the Australian rate. Aboriginal people comprise the majority of residents in our public housing system, yeah, and over 52% of tenancies in urban and regional areas, ranging up to 88% in my hometown of Tennant Creek. The scale and profile of our housing system means 
that we are uniquely placed to deliver housing that supports improved outcomes, particularly among Aboriginal individuals, families and communities. It also means we carry significant responsibility to ensure that our programs are developed in partnership with families and communities to deliver safe and appropriate housing to some of the most vulnerable households across the Northern Territory. For this reason, this conference is vitally important to the work of the Northern Territory Government. We are keen to hear and understand the experience of local and overseas jurisdictions in relation to areas of housing systems that are maturing in the Northern Territory. These include the development of a community housing sector, increasing access to private rental market for vulnerable and low income households, and continuing to understand the important links between stable, appropriate and affordable housing and broader socio-economic well-being. We understand these links in remote communities, perhaps because of the acute nature of the housing need in these isolated locations. We know there are an important link between safe, stable and affordable housing in urban and regional areas in relation to mental health, employment outcomes, family violence and disability, just to name a few. These are key sessions across this conference that reiterate the fundamental importance of housing in support of improved well-being and socio-economic participation. And in terms of the conference theme, we're a government that is implementing quite radical changes in terms of housing. And the nexus between homelessness and housing in the Northern Territory very much relates to the Canadian formula and our severe overcrowding in remote Indigenous communities causes our very high statistics in terms of homelessness across the Northern Territory. We're using innovation in terms of treating the remote area problems that will also impact positively on the social outcomes of our regional towns and this fair city, the capital of Northern Australia, Darwin. In terms of our home build program, the essence is to consult with local people first, is to use local knowledge in innovation, in design, in the choice of materials, the orientation of the dwelling on the block through strong local decision-making practices. And it is resonating across the bush now, very simply, that you're a government that is finally listening. In terms of our Room to Breathe program, consulting with local people, it's quite apparent that remote community residents don't need 800 square metres of land around a three bedroom concrete core field dwelling. So in negotiation with locals and our Room to Breathe program, we're designing independent living areas for senior members of the family integrated into the family home. Outdoor living areas appropriate to Aboriginal people who love to spend large time, large amounts of time outside. Healthy areas for sharing in family activities, for cooking and, and for well-being. Of course, extra bedrooms, bathrooms and wet areas. And the Room to Breathe program is about using that service lot because land is very difficult to obtain and it is also very expensive to service. So the Room to Breathe program is complementing our new build program and local people have very much embraced that two years in to the Northern Territory Government's $1.1 billion Indigenous Remote Housing Program. In terms of government employee housing, I'll share a brief anecdote. The first school that I started in the Northern Territory was in a remote cattle station southeast of Tennant Creek. They were silver bullets in those days. They were pastoral property schools, one teacher schools. I lived in a caravan. There was a 40 foot Franklin built caravan out of Victoria as the classroom. There was an ablution block, a generator shed and a bore pump. They were great days. 
I worked with a group of kids who attended their first school in the Northern Territory and enrolled 36 kids from that community. And I still marvel at the trust that those people gave me as one of the first white fellas that was allowed into their life. There was a very brave young woman who came forward as the assistant teacher and we worked shoulder to shoulder all day working with those children from five years of age through 16 years of age. I left that school each evening to walk down towards the riverbank and my caravan, that assistant teacher left school that afternoon to walk down to the camp to shelter behind a bit of corrugated iron generally covered in acacia branches for shade. I said 40 years ago, there's something not right about this. And 40 years it has taken me to get this policy perspective into now what is our government employee housing policy, that local recruits into government jobs in remote communities have a housing entitlement. And we're working on this in terms of the real need to build stock. And in two years, we've built 38 new government employee houses and there are 28 in a pipeline of works to roll out. And we have a 10 year program to deliver. And the genesis of that policy came from the remote community on a remote cattle station. What we're doing in terms of innovation and clever thinking is we have analysed what are the normal logistics of government workers in remote communities today. Often they are single people. And so we have single teachers or a couple. We have single nurses. And traditionally with a traditional housing stock, these single offices are occupying three bedroom homes. When next door there could be a family of nine living in a three bedroom home. So the early infrastructure build in terms of our government employee housing program is about making sure we build purpose-built housing to cater for a better housing mix for the single teachers or the couples or the single nurse and we can then free up the government employee house, the three bedroom house that has been quarantined for the last 30 years for the local government recruit and their family. I'm very proud of that policy and I'm very much looking forward to growing that in terms of innovation around housing solutions. In relation to repairs and maintenance and tenancy and property management, what I have come to learn as the real bread and butter of the housing sector we are encouraging Aboriginal business enterprises, Aboriginal communities to look at the whole of the housing sector, to look at tenancy and property management, repairs and maintenance, our room to breathe pipeline of works under five year agreements, and of course new builds in terms of Northern Territory, and I will acknowledge the Commonwealth Government and their contribution. When you have those components of a housing sector, you have the opportunity to create a community housing model. You have an opportunity to underpin a remote community or town with real economy and jobs. You have the opportunity of bringing Aboriginal people every step of the way and the ultimate goal of managing that housing. This is the innovation of our remote housing policy and this is something that I think is worthy of discussion at this conference and beyond. In closing, delegates, you have gathered for this conference in a place that is unique. Our landscape is unique as, ever, as is our lifestyle and multicultural community. We have unique demographic, geographic, social, cultural and economic challenges along with unique opportunities and advantages. Therefore, we have to come up with unique solutions and our government is proud of our ideas and approach to improving housing right across the Northern Territory. We are working towards building healthy, proud, functional communities that are planned, designed, built and maintained by the members of that community. Good housing is the cornerstone to capable, functional societies and by returning decision-making powers back to the people, allowing individual families and communities to have control of their own destiny, 
so that they can create better, sustainable futures comes from the comparison of our past to our future actions. And this conference will explore more detail around this with Mr. Jamie Chalker, the CEO of the Department of Local Government, Housing and Community Development, who will present. To Danielle Jarvis, who is the Executive Director of our Town Camps Future Unit. Leanne Caton from the Northern Territory, Yili Rian Housing Aboriginal Corporation. And I encourage you to have a look at the program. These sessions will give you great detail on what's happening in the Northern Territory. Olga Hadnan from the Danila Dilba Health Service. Mr. Peter McMillan from NT Shelter and Marion Springfield, the CEO of the Northern Lands Council. So ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to be able to open this conference and it is a privilege for the Northern Territory, Territory to be able to host it. Now I'm one of the politicians in the room and my colleague Luke uh, is also here. I'm going to tell you straight I know what you're thinking when the politician does an exit stage left. I uh, live in Tennant Creek. I come to Darwin frequently. And when I'm in Darwin, they fly me around. So today I'm leaving this conference and I'm going to a remote community of Yarrow where we're building 22 new homes and we've got considerable upgrades to complete in that community as well. This is all part of what I talked about. There's government employee programs as well. And of course, we're trying to build the community housing model. Flying to Yarrow today is going to be important for me to see the program rolling out on the ground. But there's one thing that I'm very much looking forward to seeing, to meeting and to talking with, and that is the local Aboriginal people that are working in these projects.